Um, so I, I'm going to talk about today about nonlinear couplings in atomic magnetometer. Uh, best to my knowledge, National Physical Laboratory is still in Teddington, close to London, but uh, who knows. Um, the, this is my outline, if it works. Uh, we can think about atomic magnetometer as a collective spin oscillating around magnetic field. This, uh, this collective spin is pumped by pump beam and evolution of a spin is, is probed by linear, linearly polarized probe. So we have these three ingredients, atoms, pump and probe, and each of these ingredients can cause uh, nonlinear interaction. Uh, I will show the examples which are done in, in our experimental si system, which is based on cesium vapor uh, stored in paraffin coated cells, room temperature. We use uh, uh, pumping uh, uh, circularly polarized pump beam, which is tuned to closed transition 322. Uh, so, in terms of F3 atoms, this is direct optical uh, pumping. In terms of F4 atoms, which we are mostly interested in, this is indirect pumping, which relies on spin exchange collision and off resonant pumping. Then uh, we have off resonant uh, optical probe, which is around one gigahertz from re re relevant transition, and we can tune it either to F4 or F3 state. So we start with um, we start with atoms. An obvious interaction between atoms is spin, uh, spin exchange collisions, and uh, and uh, in, in, for purpose of this talk, you can think about spin collisions as a as a uh, way to mediate between different uh, uh, modes of coherences oscillating at different frequencies. So, a typical example will uh, include two coherences, say in F3 and F4 states, ground states of. Uh, Cesium, and if we have this oscillation of F4 states with spin exchange collision, will move the atom to F3. Frequency uh, is, uh, is changed, and we can represent it uh, by two uh, spectral profile in, in spectra, spectral domain. And uh, in order to, to have a meaningful macroscopic uh, macroscopic uh, transfer. Uh, of uh, excitation from one coherence to another, uh, we have to uh, reduce mismatch between uh, these two modes, and, and the condition was uh, introduced by Arosh and Cohen Tanuji. And uh, it, it's very kind of intuitive the phase difference between these two oscillations in, oscillations in two modes, uh, phase difference uh, over the time period of time related to spin exchange collision needs to be small, but we can, we can translate this we can translate this to, to spectral uh, domain, and this would be that these two frequencies need to be uh, indistinguishable within the uh, line width. So these two frequencies, say about four and three states, needs to be indistinguishable. And, and you can do this in various ways, like in SURF, you can increase gamma and, and do the measurement uh, in low magnetic field. Uh, we made the measurements in, in uh, Zeeman uh, sublevels of uh, four states and just by lowering field, or in Arosh paper and Koentanuji paper, these uh, uh, levels were moved by RF field. So again, uh, spin exchange collision mediate energy exchange, excitation exchange between mode, uh, uh, mode of uh, coherence uh, mode uh, when the resonant uh, condition is, is, match, is, is uh, uh, met. So the question is whether there might be uh, something like nonlinear crystal, so the, the, whether the uh, spin exchange uh, uh, can play a role of nonlinear crystal, so change, uh, uh, exchange the energy between modes which are not, not in resonance. And this, we, are, we were not the only one who, uh, uh, who addressed this question. This was done by uh, guys from uh, Weizmann Institute, and this is copied from, the, uh, from their paper, and kind of little bit blurred image indicates m my depth of understanding of the ca uh, calculations, but uh, the main idea is very simple. We start with, uh, we consider evolution of a system 
uh, with, three uh, with three components. So we have uh, mm, uh, hyperfine interaction, we have external field, and we have spin exchange, but spin exchange which, uh, is divided into linear and nonlinear part, and the uh, equation is solved uh, 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 in linear case, so this part is neglected, so this is, uh, uh, this is uh, solution for linear case, and then this solution is in, uh, fed to, to the full equation, and this is the form of full equation. And I would like to draw your attention to that, that part, which to actually structure of that part, because the structure of the part is very similar to uh, to, to, to usual uh, uh, factors that describe wave mixing. So we have something like nonlinear susceptibility of a, of a crystal, which now comes from a nonlinear term of collisions, and we have uh, two moles that are being mixed. And in, in fact, authors of this paper showed the uh, coupling between uh, coherence uh, oscillating at Larmor and uh, twice Larmor frequency. We did it in more uh, adventurous system. So we have a uh, Bell Bloom uh, setup where the uh, amplitude uh, modulated pump pumps the spin orthogonally to, to magnetic field. And, and the evolution of the, of the spin is monitored by linear probe. And it was show, shown uh, in a paper from Antoine Weiss uh, group that in very, very early transient part of the evolution of the spin, spin oscillates not only at the modulation frequency, we have, uh, we have amplitude modulated peak, but also on Larmor frequency. And because we, we are using uh, square wave modulation, we not only have uh, uh, one modulating frequency, but we have uh, these side bands. So first, second, and third harmonic. So this is few frequency to be mixed, and that's what we observe. So these are spectra of the uh, uh, FFT spectra of the coherences uh, in this tra transient uh, time uh, from generated by atoms in F4 and in F3 uh, cases, we have this, uh, we have this harmonics, first, second, third, first, second, third, and we have, a, uh, we have component oscillating at a uh, Larmor frequency. You can see that because F3 atoms are coupled directly to the light, so the width of, that, of, the, of this component is in F3 is uh, wider than in F4. But on top of that, we have, uh, more components, which indicates, for example, the slope of this component indicates that it comes from the mixing uh, uh, of this uh, third harmonics, and in fact, it can be associated with this mixings. Uh, to make the uh, matter more complex, actually, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, Larmor, uh, this Larmor uh, component comes from a three, which can be seen in the line width of that component. And Giuseppe uh, de Villa Aqua nicely modeled the, uh, modeled the system, but I would like to draw your attention to, to this moment, because this is actually the, the moment where two coherences, this coherence that oscillates at Larmor frequency and this coherence that comes from the mode mixing, have the same frequency, so this is exactly the uh, res resonant condition that I was talking for linear uh, spin exchange, and we observed two signatures of linear, uh, linear uh, uh, spin exchange, which is the, the profiles are uh, moving to each other, and, and then uh, the line width is changing accordingly to, to quadratic dependence. One of the, again, one component uh, has the line width of a free state, which is indicated by red points, and the other is F4, which is not touched by, uh, not touched by, uh, but by light. So we're done with the atoms. Now we are moving to nonlinear couplings that are introduced by pump. And again, we still are in, uh, in Bell Bloom experiment. And uh, usually in Bell Bloom experiment, uh, we are looking at the uh, amplitude of a signal at the, uh, we, which is uh, oscillating at modulation frequency. So we usually get the this, uh, this resonant shape, when the uh, modulating frequency is equal to Larmor frequency, we get the resonances. And now is the time that 
Some of you might, uh, might have attended the uh, meeting two years ago uh, in Fribourg, and I have uh, mean, uh, disagreement with, uh, with Antoine Weiss, and he insisted that this peak is done by, uh, uh, by alignment uh, produced by circular light. I disagree. So for the record, you are recording that, right? So for the record, uh, Antoine Weiss was right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we're done with that. <laughs> uh, but I'm interested in component that oscillates not at modulation frequency, but which oscillates at Larmor frequency, because uh, this is the, our, our uh, uh, kind of uh, free oscillator. And in, in the spectrum, excitation spectrum of this uh, uh, free oscillator, we, we, can, we can see the uh, resonances which indicate parametric process. So the property of the system is modulated uh, by, by the pump and this property uh, it's, uh, it's uh, decoherence time and uh, be, be, because the uh, uh, light is coupled to a free state and whatever hap happens to a free state, I, I, sh I think I proved this to you, is transferred to F4. So we do the observation in F4, but this, is, uh, this uh, type of parametric effect was observed al already in mechanical uh, oscillator, oscillators. In particular, that paper refers to, to the uh, parametric amplification in case of cantilever. Uh, the uh, spring, uh, spring constant of this cantilever was changed by the capacitor connected to that, uh, to that cantilever. And the gain in amplification process depends on, on phase. So the, so the amplitude, uh, amplitude uh, of the signal in phase with uh, a parametric drive is attenuated, and amplitude of the, uh, of the signal out of phase is, uh, is uh, amplified, which, which was observed. One component is attenuated, one is amplified. And according to the, because the, the amplitudes are uh, uh, amplitudes are changed. Uh, noise changes, normal thermal noise changes accordingly. So the, the, there was a kind of normal uh, mechanical spin squeezing. And this happens in our case. So we are looking at the amplitude of uh, resonances of this uh, coherences oscillating at, uh, at Larmor frequency. And, and two components have different amplitudes. And the noises, this is spin noise spectrum. So this is recorded with 30 millisecond uh, uh, integration time, uh, more or less 100 milliseconds after, uh, after, uh, after uh, beginning of a, of a pumping. And, and we have asymmetry in noise. And we can check, uh, we can check dependence, similar dependence, so, so this how how the amplitude of these two components changes with the parametric drive in means pump beam intensity, and accordingly the, the, we see the change as in asymmetry if not in noise. This, these points show what happens if we, uh, uh, the tune, if we tune the parametric drive to four times Larmor frequency, effect disappears. But uh, in order to get a gain, a kind of insight, what happens is it's better to uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to show this data in different forms. So we, we calculated variance divided by uh, relevant amplitude and, and we plot it as a, as a function of, of a, uh, one of the component's amplitude. And what you can see is that in, uh, in case when the projection uh, noise uh, is, is uh, the highest component of the noise, uh, variance scales linearly with a, with a with the amplitude of a coherence, and so then the fact that we observe this constant value means that in, in, in this particular case our system is limited uh, by projection noise, and actually we have uh, quite, a, quite a big spin squeezing. So we're done with atoms, we're done with pump, uh, briefly about the probe, uh, briefly because it was already uh, described several times in Dima Butker papers, uh, uh, the case of uh, so-called alignment to orientation conversion. Uh, and uh, uh, when, uh, when we have this linear probe, it in introduces nonlinear spin dynamics and, and it can move the uh, atom, uh, oriented atoms into uh, oriented atoms into aligned states. So it introduces the uh, introduces dynamics. 
And the same uh, we observe in our system. We are, in our system, we, we, we have indirect probe in, in a four state, uh, uh, which pumps 82% uh, of the atoms into stress state, but there, there are some atoms remaining, and this, uh, these atoms are, are moved by a nonlinear probe uh, with specific power. They are moved to stress state, and we see this as a, as a um, uh, uh, because we eliminate spin exchange collisions that peaks are getting narrow, and even we can, we can then, the torque that moves atom into one state then starts to process, uh, start precession of the atoms around magnetic fields, which, which is, uh, which is uh, representation, realization, particular representation of a spin maser. Uh, so we, I, I, I showed a few examples of how the pump or atoms or probe can introduce um, in nonlinearity in the system. So, uh, now, uh, in the remaining 20 minutes, I tried to negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> uh, I, 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 will, I will show you uh, 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 what we try to, to, to do kind of in, uh, for real life. So this is how we detect the uh, defects in, in uh, steel work or, or uh, in metal work. We have RF ma atomic magnetometer, which is oriented along uh, primary fields. Pri primary field, uh, so uh, our magnetometer is not sensitive to primary fields, but it's sensitive to secondary field, which is generated uh, in, in, a, in, in a system. And, and then this, uh, this uh, secondary field, or, or we, we are uh, sensitive to the, to the component, which is uh, within the uh, parallel to the surface, and, and we see in amplitude, we see the ring in phase, we, we see this vortex, so we can, we can uh, make a 2D, 2D map of the of magnetic field uh, in this case. But now we can introduce our spin maser, which I, 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 I mentioned before, and the, the idea is the following. Our atoms oscillate, uh, we pump atoms along bias field, and because of uh, because of fluctuation, they will start to oscillate, and at larger frequency, this oscillation will, will be uh, monitored and transferred into voltage oscillations. At, uh, after the detector, this volt voltage oscillation will be fed into uh, into coil, which is our primary field coil. Again, we are not sensitive to this coil, and but the secondary fi uh, field might create the feedback uh, in case the uh, the there is no uh, the, uh, the accumulated phase along this path is zero. So we, left, uh, we leave our atoms to demo democratically ch uh, ch uh, uh, kind of pick up whatever part of the recess because the, I, I showed you before that the phase is, is, is uh, creating vortex so the atoms can pick up the part of the uh, recess they, they want to, uh, they want to uh, record so this is part of a part of the image uh, amplitude in phase. Uh, the, the image shows that we trigger maser action only where we where we meet this this condition. So 70% of that at, uh, time our atom ma atomic magnetometer doesn't work. Uh, but when I reported this to our managers, I it, it, so it sounded kind of weird that 70% of the time we're not doing anything. So I, I, I was talking about lowering car carbon fo footprint, economy, uh, ecology friendly atomic magnetometer because it only works uh, in, in particular places. But we can move actually with a phase shifter, we can, we can move um, this, this, uh, this part and, and recreate the whole image. And we can even, you can see the trace of a vortex that I showed before. And just as a last slide, we can, we can do this with atom oscillating. Well, we can do this with atom oscillating uh, simultaneously in F4, in a, a, F3. So this is, uh, so, uh, but because of the geometry phase difference, this part is, uh, this part comes from the F3 atoms and this uh, this part, uh, this image is created by uh, four atoms, and we see that this difference in, in frequency. This is the of, a, of a frequency. So we have a kind of two-level spin maser, which we 
which we can use to, to create the image of our recess. And with that, I conclude. Thank you.